Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that Yay. midweek break. <laughs> hey, and just talking about some of the fun things we thought going on in the world of open source. Fair warning, we do like to have a little bit of fun on the show, so if you're allergic to laughter, run <laughs> while you still can. That might Aww. be a thing. Hi, I'm Vin. That Jill. That mm -hmm. Pedro. <laughs> yes, hello, All hello. It's got to break. <laughs> everyone watching this live, man. Um, what's going on? What's new with everyone? Pedro, do you get anything exciting? Do you have that? What do you have in that cup of water? Uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, literally water. I had tea before, but uh, it's warm enough in here that I don't need the tea anymore. So, yeah, water. <laughs> I've had that problem recently when I think, man, it's a bit 32 degrees outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toasty. Toasty. Jill, do you get anything fun going on? Oh, yes. So, wow. So I've done eight Linux podcasts and video streams in the last week. <laughs> and everything from, of course, LWW and our game streams to uh, uh, guest hosting on the Eng English Bob's podcast and Linux un Unplugged twice because we we uh, recorded two in one week. <laughs> so And uh, Steve's very own podcast. Gosh, I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I I actually you know added them up, oh my gosh, that's the most I've ever done in one week. <laughs> so Pretty it was good. a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Pretty decent, man. <laughs> Top of the show notes. I was in playing around with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I did make a new um, episode of Interfacing Linux. Like I said, I was going mm -hmm. to do if you are into music production, audio production, anything like that. You, even if you like doing the beeps and the boops, you might want to play with Outdoor. You just notice that Outdoor 6.0 is out. There's no build instructions for that. Never really has mm -hmm. been. If you even if you go to the page, you're like, download it, have fun, guess out, you know, <laughs> the entire paragraph of dependencies you're going to need. Also, you can get stuck in a dependency circle jerk on Ubuntu and Debian if you don't do it in the right order. So... That video has been dropped like it's mildly warm. For patrons, it'll go live for public consumption, I think, Friday at noon. So, no worries there. I still got to get the uh, stuff on the web zone for a little guide. Also, mm -hmm. I have a network cable. Actually, I got a couple of network mm -hmm. cables. Mm -hmm. My network cables look different than most people's, but yeah. <laughs> I'm up to something. More on that, probably. Maybe mm, next week. Nice. Maybe not. I only report my successes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's got a brilliant. All right. Uh, we got to get right into it because uh, mm -hmm. what was it last week or week before last that we finally had some Ryzen powered laptops show up? Like yeah. Weeks. With Linux. Yeah. It was week yeah. before last and it mm -hmm. was Tuxedo Computers. Oh. And mm -hmm. wouldn't you know it, they're back. Uh, this time it's not a monster desktop replacement that you can put a 3950X into. This, this is a laptop. It's got a 91 uh, watt hour battery and it comes with a Ryzen 5 3500U, which is a quad core, eight threads, um, three point something base clock. It is a very respectable laptop it's also you know very slim as compared to the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> ax15 uh from two weeks ago which was a chunky yes. boy this th this one's a uh, slim and light and it's uh yeah that it is a proper ryzen laptop i don't know with man. linux Let's see <laughs> i'm looking at this and it's got full-size usb ports man that's so like yeah yep. Uh -huh. 2018 man. <laughs> this certainly this, this just have like a USB-C port on it and some adapters the, 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 it doesn't have a half eaten apple on the back yet but <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they know their target audience and their target audience are Linux people and yeah they even a full size um, ethernet <laughs> I, okay I, I, I fully understand mm -hmm. The everyone wants to live that dream. First thing to break. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> they haven't broken on the two laptops that I have that have those flippy bits. <laughs> you will. I very much the PCM ICIA, whatever it was, uh, cards back in the day I had to use for Ethernet connections. Lost track how many times I've walked away with the um, 
Ether noodle plugged into that and it's ripped out. <laughs> it it I, seems more self-inflicted. I, I'm just saying yeah. that's what's going to happen. It's the same thing with the headphones. How many times have you gotten up with your headphones plugged in? Uh, usually... I only use these if I know I'm going to be stationary for a while, because mm -hmm. I've started using... The cable mm -hmm. is extra. <laughs> these. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bluetooth. Blue Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give you a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> What's this gonna run me, Pedro? Uh, the uh, base model uh, starts at 899 euros, which is, you know, about half the price of the base model uh, from the other one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, this is, um, oh, 859. All right. That was off. Uh, yeah. And it, yeah, it is basically half the price of the previous model that we talked about. And yeah, it is a laptop. 15 watt TDP yeah. processor, um, 8 gigs of RAM from the base config, 1080p panel. It is an entry level Ryzen laptop that runs Linux out of the box. That's good. With very good battery life. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you think you can get away with it before, Pedro? Like, you could do more than just your standard light browsing or anything like that, right? Yeah. No, uh, th oh, th yeah, this yeah. has a uh, Vega 8. Okay. So yeah, it's you not, do... you know, a desktop APU level, uh, but it will do plenty of gaming at 1080p on the lowest settings or 720p on medium or high settings easily, any day. Yeah, <laughs> and you can do video editing and animation on it, too. It's a Ryzen. <laughs> you could. Um, I yeah. wouldn't recommend it. It's only but... a quad core. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you still could. You still could. It'd be a good, good little portable computer for... I, I, I could ride that. a tricycle a on the um, interstate, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's meant for Two web browsing years of warranty and productivity. Included in the price. It's Yeah, <laughs> no, it's 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 pretty good. It's not bad. If you want it out of the box and you're like, hey, man, why don't I hear about these in the States? Uh, not really. I mean, it's an option, but you'd really have to go to your way for it. But our brothers and sisters in the U <laughs> European Union and European Union adjacent areas. Yes. Yes. Europe. Yeah. We, we, we have to start using Europe again. There we go. That's the thing. <laughs> hey, Lenovo, they've done another good. They did. And this we is incredible. About, we talked about um, how Lenovo was going to start uh, shipping some of their ThinkPad models with Fedora a while back. But apparently, it's not just Fedora because they're having Dell's cake and eating it too. They yes. are uh, going to be bringing uh, Red Hat and Ubuntu to their uh, ThinkPad P series and also the ThinkStations. Think your Optiplexes, but the Lenovo variant. And yeah, they, that's what it they looks will like have when the option. You run Linux. Mm -hmm. And like that's that. Unity. That's Unity there. <laughs> on the screen. It could be GNOME because it looks the exact same. Uh, the... <laughs> it's actually Unity, yeah, it's I found out. Pretty nice. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, one of the things I'm looking at with this, uh, that's going to be a lot more options, you know? I mean, like, hey, because if you're at work, if you get to go through a purchasing manager, you can probably get a Lenovo too. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying now, you have a Dell, now you have a Lenovo, and I'm definitely down yeah. with that. And they're going to have the options for preloaded Fedora images. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't want to be on the sport end for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's be honest. I'd yeah. rather support Fedora than Windows 10. Yeah, if, in, in the right hands. Yes, and I could say that for right either <laughs> and, you know, I'm just saying, that's the other alternative. <laughs> aw. So, and to me, this was such, you know, it's such a huge deal, not only because it's not just one or two models of laptops or computers, but all their workstations, all the, all the Lenovo uh, laptop and computer workstations. And it... This is just gonna, this is so huge also because it means more adoption of Linux on the laptop, but um, I, I, Linux on the desktop, I mean, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, but 
what's really cool is Lenovo, you know, they know their audience. They know there's more being done in AI and cloud and animation. They, you know, talked about animation and graphics as well. Are, are there other are customers that are using Linux? So this just, it makes sense. And, you know, in April, when we talked about Lenovo having Fedora pre-installed pre and supported on their laptops, Lenovo, they had hinted at more Linux distributions coming to their computers. So now it's here, and it was pretty quick, too. <laughs> awesome. It's very good. Very like good. That. Um, that is just going to make it so much easier, because when, when I think about this, I think about my people working for larger companies that, you know, that they're not going to be able to get a System76. They might not have Dell. Or just the poor person stuck there. They're like, hey, man, I can mm -hmm. get a box now that sports Linux. You can buy it. So let's get exactly. that. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaky picture. And Dell needs uh, Dell needs to bring back the Ryzen um, mm. APUs to their Latitude line because the 5495 has been discontinued now. They're not making new ones. So more Ryzen, please, Dell. I don't know, man. I mean, not to get on the aside, but I, I, I it's going to get laughable in a minute with Intel, like. Like, don't do AMDs. Please don't. Right. Please don't. Right. <laughs> we'll cut the prices in half for you to get the chips. Just please don't. Yeah. <laughs> some bizarre options of like, why is that still a thing? They're like, oh, we don't get to yeah. sell the right. Yeah, you're going to have to start selling rice. And like it or not, we get a new version of Linux, though. 5.7's out. What's new? Yes. So last Sunday, <laughs> Linux kernel 5.7 was released, and it includes lots and lots of important updates. Yeah, and as we have talked about been talking about uh, here on LWW, the new XFAT driver from Samsung, Samsung is included in this release. And this more modern XFAT driver replaces the existing Microsoft one, which was older. And 5.7 also introduces thermal pressure checking to the task scheduler, which improves performance when CPUs are overheating. And another big one that a lot of people have seemed to overlook is that ACPI support for USB interface devices. That there is a ACPI support for USB, so you can now perform power management and monitor the status of use USB devices on Linux, which is huge. Without which, without using a third-party program, it's just going to be built into the kernel, and that's yeah. You that's could already really do it, awesome. but you'd need a yeah other yeah. things. <laughs> other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about on the graphics side? Did you see anything in there, uh, Pedro, that was uh, like AMD? Anything rocking and rolling with that? I didn't. Mm -hmm. But then again, I didn't look for it. Uh, what I did see was actually it's not included with 5.7, but it was a patch submitted uh, to the kernel that is going to be implementing a um, security feature similar to what Windows already does. Did and you see the one that Linus like? Kicked off. <laughs> yeah, no, that one got immediately keel hold like old line of style. I who put it on Discord. Doing, okay, <laughs> who who was doing that? I forgot the company. That, that was submitted. AWS. Uh, oh, that was that yeah. was on oh, web yeah. services. They were just yeah. like, they yo, submitted, hey, could you put this thing in there that just like, yeah, uh, cuts all they the submitted mitigation a patch stuff? to um help with the level one cache snooping uh mm -hmm. on Intel processors. And Linus is like, first that's completely useless if you have a hyperthreading enabled. It literally does nothing. Second, it's stupid because if people are going to be um, snooping, they can snoop before you do the clear because their patch, all it did was allow applications to opt in to clear the level one cache mm. as they exited. And Linus is like, mm. you're not introducing that into the kernel. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on, Linus, little, little, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there was also support, there's also support now for Intel Tiger Lake graphics, which is uh, really, actually really cool, uh, Generation 12. And the mainline kernel now supports the Pine Tab, Pine Phone, and Pine Book Pro. <laughs> Those are the ones I saw. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's pretty neat, man. On the audio side, no big changes. Uh, nothing to look forward to or be afraid of. I mean, everything should mm -hmm. just work. So, yes. That's good. Good news. And on the fun stuff, what do we have next? Oh, okay. I know we got next. <laughs> Which we don't talk yeah. about very often. Everyone. Yes. <laughs> everyone. 
loves men. It's great. It, yeah. It was perfect. It was wonderful. It was the poster child of this is the cool Linux to install. Yeah, I know. The kids are like, but, but Arch, Arch. This, this was the Arch of its day. It's what all the it kids was. installed. Yes. Everyone had it. Uh, this is just an update of some of the new stuff that they have going on in the latest version. But I guess we need to go right back to the one that you had to drew some yes. attention. <laughs> yeah. It did. The internet was like, wait a minute, what? So, to quote, we've also heard your queries on the topic of SnapD. This is a topic which is important to us, and we've already explained our position last year. Um, yeah, they kind of ducked on it. Uh, 24 package based Chromium. Yeah, remember that. So mm-hmm. with Ubuntu now, if you install Chromium, it's going to go. Ah, yeah, I saw you talk, uh, typed in apt. Uh, here's the snap, though. Deal with it. Mm-hmm. That's just the thing. Now, you know what? That's the thing. Uh, but. I don't like surprises. I, I especially don't like something installed with a different package manager. And apparently they didn't either. So they're going to just disable that, man. Um, like previous Mint releases, they will not ship with any snaps or snap D installed. Second, to address mm-hmm. the situation, we'll do exactly what we said we would. What did they say they would do? Chromium won't be an empty package, which installs snap D. Behind your back, it will be an empty package. Ha ha, deal with it, which tells you. Hey, I'm in the <laughs> package. Deal with it. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I know Alan had a blog post last year that laid their case out. And I'm like, this is why we're doing Chrome. Mm-hmm. It's going to be easier to maintain with Snap I'm like, all right, I get that. But calculator? <laughs> <laughs> calculator. System, uh, system monitor. Somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know exactly where it was at, but... Uh, they do have a just straight Debian version of Mint, but it's a little bit out of date. So, I a little bit. I, that was my first thought: is <laughs> that, do they still have their Debian spin? Why don't you just bump that up, r- r- run it straight from the veins, man? Nah, <laughs> get some of that Debian life. Because hey, man, everything's cooler on Debian. Ha ha! Take my word; I'm not biased. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Like a little bit, biased, yeah, but no. not too much. The Chromium browser deb uh, being literally just a meta package that installs Snap and then uh, Snap mm-hmm. installs the Chromium browser yeah. is not cool. I no. had mentioned that in the uh, on this very show before, and uh, canonical. You and I, we need to have a bit of a talk because chances <laughs> are you remember what happened with the Unity desktop environment. You remember what happened with Upstart. And you certainly remember what happened with Mir. And what those three have in common with Snaps is that you were forcing them down everyone's throats. That doesn't go well, ever. It never has, and it mm-hmm. at the rate that you're doing it right now, it never will. Just stop. <laughs> yeah, what are you, and- the desperate industry whisperer. <laughs> you're like, ah. <laughs> no, I'm the summer glow of Linux. I Here, this, this is <laughs> this is exactly what I will come back and throw back because this is one area that you know I have my problems, but I can go, I, I can irritate both sides. Watch this. Um, <laughs> I get it, because I've always said with Canonical, you need companies that will try things like the phone. You'll need things that will try things like Mir. And, and you know what? They might crash and burn, but you need those moonshot projects because you never know. Because the industry, the open source, the community, the ecosystems, we're very happy with good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't innovate. I'm saying don't force it down people's throats. That's my argument here, because forcing Unity down people's throats has you now having your default distro with GNOME. Forcing Upstart down people's throats now made System D the default in every distro and their dog. You're forcing Mir down people's throats, not Patrick, but um, it made X still be the dominant display server. Mir, I honestly think... (laughs) Here I am. I'm going to say Mir was developed uh, when Mir got dropped because, like, you know what? We, we don't need a mobile display <laughs> manager now because we're not doing the phone. Yeah, the synergy. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I'm I'm not really thrilled either about uh, 
running Chromium as a snap, because um, I, I used to use it here on on uh, LWW for doing WebRTC and, and stopped ever since the, the update. But I understand the reasons behind it. And I do, because it's easy to update, but hiding it behind a .deb yeah, it's a little, mm. little not. Yeah, not it's cool. easy to update, but you <laughs> yeah. can't lock it down to a specific <laughs> version if you need that specific yeah. version because it does something. You can't. Listen, auto yeah. updates are the future. You shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up and update. Oh, the yeah. Microsoft mentality. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. A couple other mentions though with the Linux Mint 20, they've done some work with the NVIDIA Prime business. So the. <laughs> Another attempt at making that work correctly. One day. Um, one day. One day, one day that poster will be irrelevant, Ben. One day. <laughs> what, he's, he's, he's saying NVIDIA's... <laughs> you're saying NVIDIA's number one, right? Yeah. Uh... Yes. <laughs> That's what that finger means. That's what it is, man. Like, people misconstrue the yeah. heartfelt love Linus has. But... I have one last thing to add about Mint is okay. it, I've questioned mm -hmm. what Mint is good for on this very show before. Mm -hmm. There it is. They're not bending to they're not bending the knee and adopting snaps. Very good. I think snaps are <laughs> definitely going to have their future um, with Ubuntu server because that's the one place server. you can sell me on containerization. <laughs> When you get to desktop apps, maybe we need something different. Um, yeah. But then again, the whole idea of having a snap so you can have a store. Stores only work in closed ecosystems. Even Microsoft can be like, hey, we got a Microsoft store like Apple. And they're like, yeah, but we got other options. Apple's like, you know what? You don't on ours. So there's where your <laughs> store works. And that's the only environment <laughs> that's going to happen. Um, Linux Lite, what's this? Oh, this is really cool. This is one of my favorite light Linux distros. Just got a major release, um, 5.0. And I'm, I was really happy it supports high DPI settings in the settings menu now. And uh, the light welcome screen and light user manager now up, are updated to GTK3 and Python 3. And Chrome replaces Chromium in the light software center. And I'm sure for reasons that we just talked about. <laughs> Because <laughs> because they don't like the the Ubuntu telemetry either in their distro, and they just want want a a, a clean Ubuntu uh, that doesn't uh, oh doesn't uh, you know give back to Ubuntu in terms of yeah. uh, and you know security. They say, they <laughs> say it's hidden, but it's not yeah. because if you've installed Ubuntu, that's like the first thing you see. It's like, would you like to do yeah. a canonical about yes. your uh, things? <laughs> Yes. And yeah, most of the time I say yes, because yeah, it's fine. I've gone through so many laptops, so they have so much information for me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, new version of Linux Lite, though, uh, they uh, the whisker menu is now on the latest version, which means it has mm -hmm. proper GTK3 support and it actually integrates very, very well. They are, they're using the adapter theme for those screenshots oh and look a that, screensaver no. because that's something that's still used in 2020 that's what i was gonna bring oh, up oh, it's like, the xfc screensaver <laughs> it's in the integrated xfc current year one. argument <laughs> well jill most of us don't like burning electricity and destroying the Aww. environment as much as you do so we power our monitors <laughs> off when they're not used. <sighs> i turned my whole computer off and it's you know, when I go out of the house. Here's a side <laughs> talk. Um, I'd be interested. Anybody's, where are we at on suspend? Uh, I've grown up with Linux mm. since I was a teenager. And I, I'm an old man who should have gray hair, but I can't get any. This irritates me. Um, <laughs> he needs some of mine. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, or I could borrow some from Steve. Um, <laughs> yes, he has true gray hair. Suspend Mine's blonde. on... Um, <laughs> Laptops or desktops is was just atrociously bad on Linux for the longest time to the point to where I just to this day I don't trust it. I know intellectually mm. it should work. Yeah. Actually, footnote, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, don't put your computer to sleep. Uh, yes. Be it a laptop, <laughs> be it a desktop, just don't. Mm -hmm. That's where the problems arise. <laughs> if you yeah. have uh, an Intel or even an AMD laptop, that's fine. Just close the lid, let it go to sleep. It's worked flawlessly for the past three years on most of the laptops I have, at least with the mainstream distros. It, 
if you're mm. using Joe's favorite lyrics of 2012 that hasn't been updated for that long, and it might have issues. <laughs> I think the other <laughs> issue that I've never really went back to because we have SSDs, and if you don't want to be bothered by the slowness of your SSD, yeah. you just put it on your NVMe, then they you genuinely think about it. I mean, you can go to a cold boot on your box. Yeah. Probably, I, I'm going to say I'd put money on it than any desktop from 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. Faster than you oh, can come yeah. out of hibernation. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wake up and... That was still yeah. faster than coming up from a cold boot. Mm -hmm. but... No, a hibernation... Yeah. It had one use, mm -hmm. and it was for laptops. Say you're running mm -hmm. out of battery, but you don't want to shut down, and you've basically had the system set to hibernate if the battery is already critically low. Yeah, that makes sense, because it saves everything to the non-volatile storage device, disc. be it a hard yeah. drive or an SSD. Yeah, the good days. That's why you always RPM did it at laptop 10%. Drive. What is it doing? Just at leave least it alone. 10% battery? <laughs> don't look at it. Just let it, let it do its thing. All right, do we have anything yeah, for no, the next that was its one use. Before we get out to the next story, I'll take that yeah. as a no. Let's talk about that was remarkable it. micro SDs. What's this? This is mad hattery is what this is. <laughs> yes. When you start off with, how I added a micro SD card to my remarkable tablet. Yeah, that's right. When, when Dude didn't want to burn out his EMMC. So it was like, you know what? I'm just going to solder an SD card onto this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's start scraping away solder mask and all this fun stuff. This is just a fun walkthrough. This is like um, just a little bit of extra because I've always wanted to look at that. Uh, all right. I'm not going to be that guy because I don't post my pictures online. For my solder <laughs> jobs. I don't, I, I'm not brave enough, so I'm not going to talk smack. Drum on that in there. I firmly say that there has been a market for the longest time for tablet, you know, 10 inch, mm -hmm. eight inch device that was just e paper that yes. gave me a decent browsing experience. I don't need to watch video, but I need something that's going to have standby of till the end times. And <laughs> well, there's never really been anything until now because this is why we're talking about it. He has shoehorned. <laughs> the Linux on it. Yes. This is the tablet. No, we still haven't used the style. And it, 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 it's operating. It's operating just like you would expect ePaper 2, which is fine. That's kind of what I'm looking for. But mm -hmm. this thing can even run GNOME, which is impressive on its own. So it's got mm -hmm. a little bit of horsepower behind it, little tidy keyboard. I would like to see something like Android on an ePaper device, but I would definitely like to play around. Mm -hmm. With this, man, uh, what's the catch? Well, Jill, you say, A, yeah. they're a little pricey. And yeah. <laughs> there's also, well, I guess you could run this on the internal storage if you wanted. But well, best case scenario, you'd have to get a little stabby with your uh, soldering iron, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, the Remarkable One, when it was launched in 2017, was $599. <laughs> and e-paper devices, of course, were supposed to be cheaper. But... This is a big one, and you could also draw on it and write on it. So that that's one of the differences between you know uh, that and the Amazon uh, Kindle offerings. But now you can get the Remarkable One for just two ninety nine, which it's finally coming down <laughs> down to a reasonable price. You can pick one up and put Linux on it. And I I was also on their website, and they have a new version called the Remarkable Two, which is available for pre order at just three ninety nine. So for the new one, that's even thinner and even faster. So that's yeah. really cool. I've always been wanting one of these. And I used to, you know, I used to hack my my Amazon Kindles to play video with M player and, and do all the fun things and 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 used it as a music player. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, the <laughs> Kindles this is are awesome. definitely neat. I mean, I would like to see something <laughs> like my old Nexus 10, which this is what you, yes, this is what you do now. You sit on the desk here in the studio and you operate <laughs> lights. Ha. <laughs> um, but the reason that I had so much use out of that tablet is because it had a 9,000 milliamp battery. Battery. Yeah. Yeah. 
and yeah, that's the beauty. Genuinely a tablet that I could carry, which my use case for a day or two without not having to charge it. I would like something like that with e-paper on it. So I get an emergency communications, you know, something that I could put in my go bag. Yeah. It lasts months, you know, the battery on it. And sometimes even up to a year That'd if you great. take yeah. care of it. <laughs> yeah. With that, um, this is just wrong, Pedro. I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> no, I love this. <laughs> wrong doesn't even begin to describe it. This is snakeware. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, it's a free Linux distro with a Python user space inspired by the Commodore 64. And you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, what it does is you boot directly into a Python interpreter that you can use to literally render anything on screen. And if you're thinking, so is it just using X like regular Linux <laughs> to render to Windows? No. It's drawing them directly to the frame buffer with Python for fun and... <laughs> What's that smell? Oh yeah, that's my <laughs> graphics card because I forgot to include a line in my Python script and now it's refreshing the window about as many times a second as the processor can handle it. So my GPU is burning, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they also mentioned that uh, they are looking for more um, software but and getting pond, people- Pedro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're on. trying to get more people to uh, use it and develop stuff for it and actually get, you know, games and other things working on it. Um, and I'm, I started to like pause. It's like, okay, so how are you going to do games? Because you're not running X. You're writing directly to the frame buffer, but most games require X. Mm -hmm. So are you using Zephyr to run just a teeny tiny little window of X to run the game in? But, oh, Zephyr doesn't have any Python You need to think Python out of the box it. because so, I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to be here to introduce <laughs> um, the S. Whalen um, Python bridge. So you'll be able to use your Python powered um, nonsense on, I don't know. It's going to work just as well. As <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as soon as you mentioned Whalen, I'm like, okay, it might be feasible. See, That's this, how much I know this of is, it. This is kind of the problem. Yeah. But again, you mentioned Whalen. I'm like, yeah, probably somebody's working on that. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is actually brilliant. Um, just like we, we all thought this was amazing and had to cover it. And, you no, know, since Python... Yeah. And since Python is one of the easiest languages to learn and great for beginners and advanced users alike, the distro is simple, very simple to contribute to. And there have been other frame buffer window systems. One I had played around with was called Winnie, released in 2013, but it's not currently active. But that was just... You know, I've always been fascinated by the capabilities of the frame buffer and have spent many, many hours watching M player videos uh, in it. So that, you know, when I was uh, first started using Linux and then uh, realized there's another option to X where you could, you know, uh, play videos and do graphics in. <laughs> Which is to so. code directly into your frame buffer? Uh, yeah. I don't trust my own um, programming ability, be it with Python or literally any language whatsoever, <laughs> to have that kind of access. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you get, gotta get off the old people's lawns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, gosh, if you I had knew. something like the Commodore that you were drawing directly to the uh, the frame mm -hmm. buffer, because you know the CPU was so weak that it could barely do anything as it was, yeah, this yeah. is a fun little right. project in the sense that you're like, all right, that's neat. It's not practical. It'll never grow in any adoption, but still neat. I like it. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Fun. It's been a minute since uh, a minute. I think we went an entire week without breaking out. The Microsoft uh -oh. <laughs> loves Linux. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> totally do, man. Um, if I can. Hey, it did think. Embrace and kill. This comes from the register, like everything. Um, well, everything's going to be takes. in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> App get dev claims Microsoft reeled him in with talk of help and a job, then released remarkably 
similar package manager. Uh, I don't know. The, uh, what do you think? Big boots or tiny human? Where are you at on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, big boots. <laughs> Could be a thing. So this basically boils down. Um, Microsoft reached out to the developer of AppGet and they're like, yo, we'd, li- we'd like you to come have a talk with us and talk about some things. What are you planning in the future? Maybe there were some mentions of like, uh, you know, be able to like maybe think about hiring you know, just coming for an interview or something like that. All right, that was done. <laughs> then, dude, never heard back from Microsoft. You know, it was a couple of months later, then Microsoft's like, "Yo, we have this thing." It, now it's written in a different <laughs> we language. Have this new package manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the. Dude fell, then maybe rightfully so. And he was like, hey, man, I, I thought we were talking about, you know, maybe like funding development of that Git. And Microsoft went radio silent on him. So what are your takes on that? Let's start with Joe. Yeah. Well, I think Microsoft got caught using bad open source business practices, <laughs> obviously. And, you know, he they need to give... Um, even Beji credit where credit is due. And they did a rebuttal in saying that they are going to give him credit. And, uh, you know, his his software was once again called App Get, not Apt Get <laughs> from, from Debian, but App Get. And, you know, I actually do understand why the name is WinGet and not Microsoft App Get, because that sounds too much like Apt get from Debian. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, you know, Kivan, um, he had, he was supposed to get hired, um, supposedly going to get hired. And then they end up using a lot of his code in Winget and not giving him credit. And that, that just is um, not Jill, cool. No. Apparently they didn't use any of his code. Not a bit. They just poked him for ideas uh, because Thanks to uh, Pennywise uh, oh. for posting the second bit in the Discord, which was uh, AppGet really helped us, Microsoft says, but That's offers right. no yeah. apology for killing open source package manager. And um, the developer said, uh, the, the Microsoft developer said, it's like, we're not using any of his code because we didn't see any of his, uh, any of his code. We uh, just asked him in because we were trying to uh, get some ideas for the thing. And then the whole uh, hiring bit was kind of not mentioned in their non-apology. And um, yeah, a couple of months later, there's a new thing that works very similarly, but again, not reusing any of the code as far as Microsoft goes, uh, or as far as they say. Yeah, it was a different version of C is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. the... Basically, the developer is like, oh, so what the hell do I do now? (laughs) Well, (laughs) there was really nothing to be done when you think about it, man, because worst case, worst case, what we might actually be dealing with is, you know, Microsoft brought the dude in, pick his brain, you know, under the guise of like, hey, we might be able to fund some of your work or we might even give you a job. Best case, you know, Microsoft did bring the guy in, which they didn't like, Hey, and he's like, yeah, I went through some interviews and he went mm-hmm. through some interviews and always the interview. He's like, I did great, but it could have very well been IRL. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, after the interview, I would say that to be mean, you know, I know nobody wants to hear that, you know, but I've been on the hiring end and I've had to go mm-hmm. love your work. Great project. Uh, uh-uh. that, you know, and unfortunately that can be a thing. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm going to be brave and go out on a limb and say, could have been a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, the two are most certainly yeah. not mutually exclusive. I, I, I'm just saying, man, you know. Yeah. I'll give you a little bit of free advice, though. Like, if any company, I probably get this at least twice a year. Uh, they reach out to you, they hunt you down because, okay, hey, we found you're doing a show now. Okay, that's like, they want to do like a multi hour a conference of any type. It's called consulting kids and you charge them for Mm -hmm. it. You charge them for it hard because once they're done having their, you know, um, brainstorming, poof, they're gone. They're not going to hire you. They're not going to, 
give you money, charge them up front and say this is what it costs an hour. And if they can swallow that, then do it. Might have been a hard lesson learned for a friend here. <laughs> yeah, no, if uh, that turns out to be the case, and I really do hope because he closed on the project and uh, AppGet is no longer being actively developed. Uh, and he's going like, well, you were developing a package manager for Windows. Mm. It's Microsoft you're dealing with. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we're well, dealing with parts of Microsoft, and that 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 is a mm -hmm. nightmare in itself. Because there's genuinely parts of Microsoft that are trying to move forward, but there's still yes. the old guard, very much mm -hmm. there. So, and a lot of those are probably still in HR and stuff like that in interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey everyone, uh, if you like what we do, you want to support us, you can come over to LinuxGameCast.com. Tap that support button, fam. Or maybe just share the show on like Twitter or Facebook and all that. We got Wishlist. We got Libra Pay. Patreon. That's where the super awesome people kick us a few bucks each week. It's kind of brilliant. Helping us out. We throw some things back in your direction. Access to the pre-show, show notes. Uh, what else we got? Patreon. Do we get anything fun? Well, besides having access to our Discord and getting preferential treatment, yes, because we judge you. <laughs> How dare you, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you trying to say that if people are financially making this show possible, they get preferential treatment? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Yes. They can uh, come join us to play video games. Uh, oh. Usually, Ven and Jordan on um, Thursdays and Fridays will do multiplayer games. So you get uh, preferential treatment if you'd like to join us. Will, will you, you say nice things if you're a about Patreon? Me? <laughs> I, I, I need you to say like three nice things about me then. Van is. Uh... See, he will do the same for you. He will sit up and like try to make up some things. <laughs> <laughs> we treat everyone the same man uh to that credit we have a uh, discord for patrons but it's bridge to irc which has always been free always will be free and that's what we're using right now for live it's also tied into twitch so it's kind of brilliant everybody can get together but we do have a little bit of a wish zone thing where people are like yo we want to help you out do some things mm -hmm. sometimes they're constructive we're picking up stuff on amazon then there's this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the uh, cage there, but uh, there's, there's cage. also <laughs> yoga pants that you can't really see, but yeah, no, they're yoga pants. <laughs> and <laughs> we, I need to thank Aldius for that. I did ask him if he had included a note because the note didn't make it, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't include a note. He just included two pairs, one of which is right here in my hand and the other pair. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Yay, Pedro. <laughs> I am wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of frightening you're putting that together like, oh god i know where the other like pair I is said, <laughs> like i said it's very dark back there and these are black yoga pants uh -huh. so um thank you aldius these are actually very comfy so like <laughs> nice. real talk has like nori been like those are mine by the way <laughs> <laughs> she uh, claimed dibs on one of the pairs all right <laughs> <Take a short. laughs> I, it's like, oh, one of those is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will put the name up on the board. We do have um, the fine upstanding cannibals. Well, uh, for Aldius, because something did yeah. show up over here, um, which I went and picked up yesterday evening. It was a new APC nice. for the audio rack, which is something I've always wanted to put in there, um, which brings us up to one, two, three, four, five in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> which it, I know it's really boring. So that's, that's all the stuff on the studio. It's just terribly boring stuff, but you think about it when the show continues and we have a power outage and the stream doesn't go down mm -hmm. and we have to start everything back up again. Those have saved us. Not that power goes out all the time. And I know it's kind of silly, but you'll get some joy knowing that I was crawling around on the floor, installing a one U on the bottom shelf of the rack with trying to get these meat mitts <laughs> Under there, fortunately, and, yeah, I'm, I'm sore in very Aww. fascinating places today. Like even like my right ankle I was like, what? oh, I know what I was doing. I was bent. Like yeah, that. I learned that the other day. My wrist is um, thicker than a one U. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I could probably like get it in there. I, I can load. <laughs> Man, I installed thousands of pieces of rack gear in my life. Um, I can still load um, nut holders with my teeth with a screw. Because <laughs> I was having to do some <laughs> yoga of my own to get that situated. Aww. But it's in, it works, and Yay. it's within a spec. So we're only at like 73% load, according to whatever cyber power he uses for that moon number. I'm like, that's fascinating. Do you cut off when I overload you? Nope. All right, we're cool. Um, yeah. It's just a fun number they came up with. <laughs> <laughs> But that'll keep the audio stack on its own circuit breaker, and uh, that's cool. Thank you for that. that was Yay, Aldeus. <laughs> awesome, Aldeus. <laughs> now we need to have a little bit of a slot. Yeah. Eight gigs. Yes. So the eight gig Raspberry Pi is here. Exciting. We've all been talking about it and and wanting it. I looked for it on Amazon. It wasn't quite there as of yesterday. Uh, but it is it is here. So now you can get a one, two, four, and eight gig variant of the Raspberry Pi four. And uh, you know, last week we talked about how how you can now we do now need they, to address real they have a kernel. The um, <laughs> they had a little bit of a slip up way back when on the next. Oh launch. yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, so they had <laughs> uh, a, a, a while ago, uh, someone had posted this. Uh, it was a. Uh, Received, oh no, uh, no, 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 no post that. that is the safety pie. user guide that's included oh, with the with Raspberry the, Pi with your pie. Pie. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, and that slip that there was a 8 gig variant on there. Yeah. So, but I there was also someone who had a receipt with one on it as well. Uh but is it uh what's cool is the Raspberry Pi OS is no longer called Raspbian, but um it is the Raspberry Pi OS. And the big news here really is that um, there is a 32 gig, 32 bit and 64 bit variant of the Raspberry Pi OS to support more memory, which will really help out. And uh, there's actually a lot of new features also for Raspberry Pi OS this release. There is a new bookshelf, bookshelf application for viewing the whole catalog of PDFs from the Raspberry Pi Press, which produces their own free books and magazines, including the Magpie, which we talk a lot, a lot about here on LWW, for uh, free tutorials, uh, PDF tutorials and downloads. It has a new magnifier app for the visually impaired, which is custom made for the Raspberry Pi. So it works really nicely with the Pi. And when you launch Chromium on a new image, there is a short questionnaire on what users are doing with their Raspberry Pis. So that the and Raspberry Pi snap. Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not a snap. <laughs> and that, yes, exactly. It's Debian. That's pretty cool, man. They definitely walked out and they're like, yo, we were, we were going to always make these. We, the, the SOC for the, the memory, not the, but just the yeah. memory module, didn't exist at a price point that we could get it and make it make sense in a package. No, it does. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pedro, what would you do with an eight gig pie? <laughs> um, depending on what it can run, because uh, part of the software development also includes like um, a proper Vulkan driver for the uh, Broadcom graphics chip mm -hmm. that the Raspberry Pi uses, which is nice. It's very nice. And once that is in there, PlayStation 2 emulation? Uh, yeah. Actually getting a proper emulator box that basically plays everything from the PlayStation 2 slash Nintendo 64 slash, you know, like the more demanding consoles that era back. It's getting there. Yes, I'm please. definitely sitting back and we're talking <laughs> in the British show, man. I'm looking for like the next mm -hmm. SOC revision to see what they come up with because I, I, I want something powerful enough to do the desktop stuff, but also WebRTC and have enough ports yes. on it and expandability. Yeah. But keeping it in that, you know, hundred dollar package. If you give me something like that, then basically I want budget nooks that I can just tape and get some of my floor space back in here. That'd be a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to tell us about your perplexing pie prowess, how can they do that? 
<laughs> well, you can send us all of your alliterations to linuxgamecast.com um, forward slash contact or just hit the contact button on the nav bar. And LWDW is the show that you need to select to send some feedback to this uh, teeny tiny little uh, bit of news that we do in the middle of the week. And that's the first letter of my um, name. <laughs> one, 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 but, one, one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it, that is the best way that you can get in touch with us because guaranteed someone will see that if you do. Most likely then. And uh, the other best way is if you're a Patreon, you can also leave us a comment there. That works. YouTube comments probably will see it. Maybe. I'll tell you what, Twitter, if you leave if you a YouTube comment, on Twitter. if you leave a YouTube comment, <laughs> Pedro will read it. But you will never lie to it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll read them. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. If you call Pedro wrong on YouTube, I'm not encouraging this. I'm totally encouraging this. We'll get back to you. Like, you wouldn't yeah. be the first one or the last one. No. But yeah. He loves it. He's like, oh, I get to go have an internet fight. And it's pretty fun to watch. It's great. <laughs> oh, come on. I did a responsible argument thingy on Twitter this week. I, it was about uh, the Proton discussion that we had on uh, LGC Weekly. Uh -huh. And I offered a reasoned and well structured counter argument to uh, what someone was saying. And then uh, he uh, went quiet. Then Jordan defended that person because they were sharing the same opinion. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to leave it there. So I was responsible mm -hmm. this way. What, what I'm How saying you? is you, you better get a couple of bites because he's getting to the age where you no longer want to. Listen to me. I've been through it. Like I used to argue on the internet too, but after a certain age, you're like, or you don't, and you become one of those yeah. people. <laughs> I, I got you know what I, I'm going to not go argue on the internet and uh, so get get them while there's still time is what I'm saying go pick those arguments with me he, he can't completely help himself 100 percent that I do have my buttons you just have to find yeah. them <laughs> ladies and gentlemen any. boys and girls we want to thank you for watching this live or after the fact uh, come check us out we're gonna roll the credits maybe yeah. a little music maybe yes Yeah. yeah, and that was a Unity five. stock. Uh, Unity stock. The only way that you can tell that that is Unity... Well, there are two ways you can tell that that was Unity. It was the little folder thingy on the desktop and the Ubuntu icon on the top of the left side dock bar thingy. That's it. And you can easily replicate those in GNOME. So... <laughs> That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you just to saying, our beautiful... I saw that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Created by us. <laughs> <laughs> How was that Not for Brad. arguing, Ben? <laughs> well, well yeah. listen, man, putting Brad is better than having my name in the credits twice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>